I'm, uh, I'm trying to do a thumbnail that depicts being sick of photography. I thought I'd stand on my camera or pretend to stand on my camera. But uh, my balance isn't very good, so there's a chance I might stand on my camera. Hello everybody and uh, welcome back to the Peak District and to a video sponsored by Lumix. I'm filming today on the G90 and all the stills that you see, I say all the stills that you see, if I take any stills they'll be taken on my my G9. Sun keeps going in and out. Anyway, uh, today I want to talk about golf. This is a photography channel, yes, but um, I want to talk about golf, which in many ways is very different to photography, but also I think there are similarities. Bear with me. So last summer I played a ridiculous amount of golf, like more golf than I've played since I was about 13. Mainly because as an adult I've had a normal job up until the last three years and I've lived in cities up until the last year. Both of those things are not really conducive to playing a, a leisurely stroll around a field type sport. But since I'm a freelancer now, I can choose when I work and when I don't, and I chose in the summer to work at night and play golf most mornings. And I loved it 50% of the time. The other 50% of the time, I, I absolutely hated it and swore I was gonna give up and threw my clubs in the shed and uh, thought I'd, I'd never play again. Until I got up the next morning and decided that I I wanted to play again. And the reason that I bring this up is because recently I've noticed uh, a number of comments and emails that I've got from people who say that their interest in photography is waning, that they think they're going to give up because they find it too frustrating, that they think it's too difficult or it's not rewarding enough, and that I completely sympathise with, both from a standpoint of photography, I've definitely felt that with photography in the past, but also because I felt that kind of thing with golf in the past. And I think some of it is completely natural. As humans, I think our interest in stuff does wane. But some of it, I think, can be helped with a bit of a, a shift in mindset. Sun's coming out. Both with golf and with photography. And uh, that's something that I work at continually with both of those things. And I thought I'd, um, I thought I'd talk about that a bit today. So I'll carry on explaining somewhere where I'm not likely to be blinded. I'm, uh, I'm hiding from the sun behind a tree. We'll see how it works when the sun comes out. Uh, right, now the whole reason I play golf is because I like the feeling of tonking a tiny little white ball as far as I possibly can in a field. And what frustrates me about golf is that largely it's a results driven game. I mean the whole point of it is to count how many shots you take throughout the course of the day and that number lets you know if you've had a good day or a bad day. And typically for me that number signifies that I've had a, a bad day. A really bad day. I mean I think in my head I'm, I'm better at golf than I actually am. So it frustrates me when the number is high. Now obviously with photography you want that number to be high and in golf you want the number to be low in terms of the, the number of shots you take. But I think largely the problem remains the same. People paying too much attention to that number of shots that they take in the day. Also I'm doing a terrible job of my, my early New Year's resolution which is to um, smile more when I'm filming. People tell me I look quite serious when I'm filming. I don't intend to, I feel like I'm smiling but I'm, I'm just looking moody I guess. Anyway from here on out I shall Attempt to smile. I'll, um, I'll stop banging on about golf now, for fear of annoying you. I'm in, a, uh, I'm in a place called Padley Gorge in the Peak District, which is lovely, very nice here, but I, um, I don't see myself getting any good photos today or any photos that I, I would be over the moon with. Just not the not the kind of conditions I like. In fact, actually, that's relevant. That is a feeling that I've only become really comfortable with in the past, I don't know, two or three years, I'd say. Going out knowing that there's probably less than a 5% chance that you're gonna end up with a photo that you're really proud with. Because the truth is that when you're taking photos outdoors of landscapes or whatever, you don't really control the environment. You don't control the weather, you don't control where you are. You don't control people in the environment, you don't control anything. And therefore kicking yourself that you can't get a photo you're proud of in an environment that you're not in control of is just silly. And uh, yeah, I've learned to, to use days like this to think about what I would do on days that are more suited to uh, good conditions for photos that I would be pleased with. And lots of people, much wiser than me, have said before that for any photographer, a good crop is 12 images in a year. 
Uh, maybe not for a wedding photographer. That would be a sparse year, I guess. But 12 good images that you're really happy with for most photographers, I think is a really good aim. And if you go out twice a month, let's say, with your camera, let's say it's a hobby, you go out a couple of days a month, that means that you only need to get a photo that you're happy with on half of your days out with a camera. But considering that when you go out with your camera, some days will just be unbelievable conditions. You'll have everything in your favor. And so you'll probably get two, three, four, five shots maybe on those trips, which means that the vast majority of the time that you go out with a camera, if you go out a couple of times a month, you don't need to get a photo that you're pleased with. It's only gonna be, I don't know, 25, 30% of the time maybe that you go out with a camera, you need to come home with something you're pleased with in order to get a good crop of photos at the end of the year. And I think too often people think that every time they go out with a the camera they need to produce something that they're, they're really happy with. And I got asked the other day about how many shots I take versus how many of them are keepers. And the truth, I think the dirtiest secret in photography is that you need to take so many photos to get ones that you're happy with. Now on the spectrum of landscape photographers who only really ever get the camera out if they're convinced that they've got something they're going to really like and the kind of street photographers who go around just sort of snapping around their head in the hope that they get something interesting i'd probably put myself somewhere in the middle like i don't have to be absolutely convinced that i'm going to love a shot in order to take a photo of it and so what that means is that i do end up with loads and loads and loads of photos that are rubbish and basically as i say i've learned to accept that that is just part of the journey and uh, that is part of what makes me able to take good photos when things are in my favor. Anyway, I'm waffling on again. I think what I'm really trying to say is that if you leave the house uh, as an outdoor photographer of any kind with expectation of good photos or even hope of good photos, then chances are I think you've failed before you even close the front door. And if you look at photography as like a, a results driven endeavor, you're gonna have a really tough time, I think, because um, more often than not, in my experience, in the experience of all the people I speak to, failure is a hell of a lot more common than success when it comes to getting photos that you're after. And uh, it's the journey that you've got to enjoy, because if you're only thinking about the result, then you'll be miserable. That's what I've discovered. In my head, this was gonna be quite like a, an uplifting video. I'm not convinced that that's coming across. But some practical tips to help with this. Number one, set your expectations at zero. Make sure that you leave the house not expecting anything, even if the conditions look amazing, because you never guarantee good photos, anything can happen, and more often than not, you probably won't get good photos, even if you're the most experienced person in the world. Number two, control the controllable. So don't worry about things like the weather and the light and other people, because you can't control those things. Just make sure that every time you go out, you're thinking about what you would do if the conditions were in your favor. Because again, in my experience, that kind of mental practice is uh, irreplaceable when conditions are good, because it means you're in the right frame of mind, you've done the mental maths, and you've worked out exactly how to get the shots you want at a time when you couldn't get those shots, so you don't have to try and figure out how to get those shots when the conditions are good. I don't know if that one makes sense. Uh, and number three, you know at like garden centers and homeware shops, places like that, they sell signs that say things like, uh, happiness is a journey, not a destination, stuff like that. I think a lot of that whimsical, airy fairy type quote stuff applies quite well to photography, as in many cases it actually does to life as well. So taking photos I think should be viewed as a journey and not the destination, not the result of the actual photo. So again, my chances I reckon of getting a good photo today before I get back to the car are plummeting even further below 5% to it. Probably about 2% now because I think it's about to start raining. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter at all because I know that I've had a better time out exploring the woods this morning than I would have sat at home. All of the best things that have ever happened to me have happened not in my living room. And a lot of them have happened because I've gone out with this knowing that there's a chance that I might be able to create something I love, even if it's a very, very, very low chance. And every time I have got a good photo that I'm really pleased with, I remember the journey to that photo just as much as the end result itself. And all the times that I haven't got photos that I'm happy with, which is most of the times I've been anywhere, I still have fond memories of those times because I've been there and I wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for the very small chance of ending up with a photo I like. So all I'm trying to say is don't worry about getting great photos every time you go out with a camera because that's not the point. In the same way that it's not the point 
that when you're playing golf you need to shoot a course record or your personal record every time you play because it's not going to happen you need to enjoy being out in a field whacking a ball or taking photos rather than focusing on the number of shots is that tied together quite nicely golf and photography I think I've got the absolute most out of that comparison that I, I possibly can. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching and thank you to Lumix for sponsoring this video. I haven't even turned my G9 on today, but it doesn't matter because it's still got me out of the house. And since here in the UK it's election day tomorrow, I'm very pleased to not be sat in front of the TV watching lying politicians on the news. Much better to be out. Thanks for watching.